Hey guys, ABX here. In this video, we'll be taking a look at one of the most popular comms in the game right now, which is Armpala. By playing Armpala myself, I've had great success with the setup, and in this video we'll be taking a look at how to play the comp, your strategy versus other tier 1 setups, and target selection. In this first section, we'll be taking a look at why Armpala is such a good comp by looking into its strengths and weaknesses. Starting with its strengths, Armpala is an extremely powerful comp for a number of reasons. These include Armpala has a ton of crowd control in the form of Polymorph, Ring of Frost, Dragon's Breath, Blind, Zap, Kidney Shot, and Hammer of Justice. This allows for a long CC chain on the enemy healer while training down one of the DPS to quickly force cooldowns. Jumping to the start of a game, we can see the enemy healer get zapped. The warrior drops his war banner, which gets killed before the enemy healer gets blinded. The shaman also uses astral shift before the kidney shot lands. And the healer trinkets out of the blind and instantly gets caught in a stun. In the previous clip, the enemy team used war banner, astral shift and a trinket in the opener since the armpala managed to set up a long CC chain, instantly putting them ahead in the game. By having a ton of crowd control and cross CC on the enemy team, Armpala can create a 1v3 scenario and shut down the enemy team completely during a setup to force multiple cooldowns. Jumping into another clip, we could see an Armpala utilizing their CC to cross the CD enemy team in the opener. The rogue opens with a cheap shot on the boomkin and the paladin stuns the demon hunter. The rogue kidney shots the shaman and the mage follows up with a ring of frost on both DPS. This setup forces Trinket from the Demon Hunter and Astral Shift from the Shaman. Armpala has a ton of defensive cooldowns to rotate through and can therefore stay aggressive for the majority of the game to keep up pressure with the Paladin having 2 Blessing of Protection charges and 2 Blessing of Sacrifice charges. The Rogue has Cloak of Shadows and Evasion and the Mage has Colorize and Ice Block to rotate with. Next, let's take a look at some of the weaker points of Armpala. Armpala can struggle against comps that can shut down their setups. The classes that can be challenging when playing Armpala are Demon Hunters, Shadow Priests or Boomkins, and Hunters. Let's break down each class and take a look at why they prove to be a challenge when playing Armpala. Demon Hunters have a ton of cooldowns to peel for their team to counter setups, such as Reverse Magic and Darkness. In the next clip, we can see how the Demon Hunter dispels Hammer of Justice from his healer and it gets reflected back to the Paladin, allowing his Shaman to use Spirit Link Totem. Reverse Magic is on a 1 minute cooldown, which means every second setup, the Demon Hunter has a dispel ready to get his healer out of crowd control. Jumping ahead in the clip, we can see the mage lands a polymorph on the shaman, and the Demon Hunter is forced to use his darkness to peel for his team, meaning the next setup he will have Reverse Magic available again. Shadow Priest and Boomkins are extremely tanky combined with a Resto Shaman, which makes them very hard to kill in most matchups. When leaving a Shadow Priest alone, they can use Master Spell to get their healer out of crowd control and counter your setup. Additionally, they also have mind control to peel during a setup if Master Spell is not available. If a Boomkin is left alone, he will start spamming Cyclone to peel for his team while off healing the target that's being pressured. When facing a Shadow Priest or Boomkin, your team will have to cross the see them to stop them from casting, as seen in this clip. The Mage lands a Sheep on the Shaman, and Counter Spell gets used to stop Cyclone, and Kick gets used to interrupt the Priest on Master Spell during this setup, which forces the priest to use this version. Hunters have Roar of Sacrifice, which is the biggest counter for Combustion, which makes setting up a burst window with Combustion a lot harder. Survival Hunters also have Mending Bandage to remove all poisons and bleeds from the target, which means the rogue will have to reapply his dots before the next setup. Jumping into the next clip, we can see the mage lands a DR Polymorph on the Shaman and pops his Combustion. The Hunter instantly uses his Roar of Sacrifice to counter the damage from it. One last thing to note before we jump into the next section of this guide is that it can also be hard to land crowd control when facing a double shaman setup. The mage will struggle a lot to land polymorph since a double shaman setup can rotate wind shear and grounding totem to stop the mage from landing crowd control. In this section we'll be taking a look at the most important goals you need to accomplish as Armpala in order to win games. As Armpala one of your biggest goals is to get a good opener. Forcing a trinket or even multiple cooldowns from a target in the opener will put your head instantly and allow you to stay aggressive for the majority of the game. 
A standard opener will be a set or blind on one target, usually the enemy healer, and a kidney shot on the kill target with either a polymorph, root, or interrupt on the off target, creating a 1v3 scenario to force multiple cooldowns. Jumping into the next clip, we can see the rogue opens with a Geralt and starts moving towards the monk to blind him. The shaman tries to astral shift before the kidney shot lands, which delays the setup. Once Astral Shift wears off, the rogue blinds the enemy healer, and he decides to sit the blind. Meanwhile the shaman gets caught in a kidney shot, and the warrior gets caught in a polymorph, creating a 1v3 scenario. The warrior decides to trinket to peel for his shaman, and the rogue follows up with a sap on the enemy healer after the blind, which then forces his trinket, and life cocoon giving this Armpala a perfect opener by forcing a ton of cooldowns. Armpala can usually train one target and eventually win the game versus most comps. When training a target, their team will eventually have to peel for him when they run out of cooldowns to use. Which brings us to our second goal, be aware of kill opportunities. For example, when blinding the enemy healer, followed up by a polymorph or sap, he will most likely have to trinket to save his DPS. Therefore, healers usually trinket a blind instantly, and this opens him up as a potential kill target. Jumping into the next clip, we can see the enemy healer gets blinded and instantly decides to trinket out of it. This opens him up as a potential swap target. Jumping into a clip shown before, we can see the enemy healer gets blinded, the shaman gets stunned and the warrior gets polymorphed. Since warriors usually aren't targeted, he decides to trinket to peel, opening himself up to a potential swap. Now that you're paying attention to who could be swapped to, there's a bunch of other factors to consider before instantly swapping targets. The general rule is to stick to one target and trade them down. However, if another target uses all their cooldowns before the kill target does, that makes them a better target instead. Pay attention to what cooldowns and trinkets are used before calling a swap. Your third goal is to ensure you never overlap defensive cooldowns. This is because Armpala benefits a lot from being an aggressive comp. The more pressure you have, the less pressure you'll have to deal with. Overlapping defensive cooldowns will put your team behind and force you to play more defensive, which is something you want to avoid. By rotating cooldowns, your team can stay offensive and do setup after setup to score a kill quickly. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how a standard cooldown rotation would look like. I'm sitting a fear, while my rogue sits a kidney shot. I decide to sit the fear and use Blessing of Sacrifice after. This allows us to instantly go offensive and turn the game around. Shortly after, the enemy team does their setup and I get polymorphed. This time the rogue uses Cloak of Shadows and kites to safety before dropping to low health. Jumping ahead in the clip again, we can see the next setup the rogue uses evasion to stay offensive. Jumping towards the end of the game, we can see Blessing of Sacrifice is used again to stay offensive for the final push. The mage lands a polymorph on the enemy healer. and the enemy rogue gets stunned. Followed up by a stun, which secures the game. In this next section, we'll be taking a look at what your game plan should be when playing Armpala against a handful of tier 1 comps. When facing an RMP, your game plan will be fairly simple. Your team should focus and use Kidney Shot on the enemy rogue, while chaining CC on the enemy healer to eventually score a kill. In the opener, both rogues will try to find each other to land a sap. Whoever is successful at doing this, instantly puts their team ahead since they get the opener. Jumping to the start of a game, we can see the enemy rogue get sapped. The mage starts casting Polymorph to peel for the rogue, but gets interrupted with Counterspell. This gives the Armpala a perfect opener, and the mage moves in for Dragon's Breath, while the enemy rogue gets stunned. The mage follows up with a Polymorph on the Priest, and this forces Cloak of Shadows from the enemy rogue. After the opener, the next setup will usually start with Blind to try and force a Trinket from the enemy team. Jumping ahead in the clip shown before, we can see Blind gets used to force Trinket from the enemy healer. 
Once Trinkets have been forced, the mage will have to try and land Polymorph on the enemy healer with the help from Dragon's Breath and Hammer of Justice. Jumping ahead in the clip shown before, we can see the mage is trying to land a Polymorph on the enemy healer, but gets feared before he can start casting it. Since the mage won't be able to land a Polymorph on the priest without support, the Paladin stuns the enemy priest, so the mage can land his crowd control to finish the game. Both the Paladin and Mage will have to work together to set up CC chains. The best way to do this is to have the Mage go for a Dragon's Breath into Polymorph. If he does get interrupted, the Paladin will stun the enemy healer, followed up by a Ring of Frost, since Polymorph and Ring of Frost are on two different schools. Arm Pala mirror matchups are very similar to the RMP matchup, and your game plan will be to kill the enemy rogue in most games. The only difference in the mirror is that you can open on multiple targets, and it will depend on the situation. The two best openers are 1. Find the enemy rogue and open on him, and 2. Open on the paladin. Jumping into the next game, my rogue is sapped and I get blinded, which means the enemy team gets the opener. My rogue gets caught in a kidney shot, and the mage lands a polymorph on me. I decide to trinket and use Blessing of Sacrifice on my rogue so my team can stay offensive. We stun the enemy rogue and I land a stun on the enemy paladin. Which allows my mage to follow up with a polymorph. The paladin uses its trinket but instantly gets caught in a dragon's breath followed up by another polymorph to secure the game. As said before, your second option in the opener is to open on the Holy Paladin. The rogue garrots the Paladin, followed up by a kidney shot, which forces his Blessing of Protection and Divine Protection. Once you force cooldowns from the Paladin in the opener, the plan is to swap to the Rogue to force even more cooldowns from the Paladin. Depending on what target uses their cooldowns, you can kill either the Rogue or the Holy Paladin. Jumping ahead in the clip shown before, the enemy Paladin gets blinded, followed up by a Polymorph. and a kidney shot after. This forces him to use Blessing of Protection to get rid of the stun and use Blessing of Sacrifice to save his rogue. Jumping ahead towards the end of the game, we can see the enemy rogue has a trinket available. But the paladin has no trinket or cooldowns available, which means the paladin is a better kill target. The paladin gets swapped to and stunned to secure the game. Next, let's take a look at how you should play versus Jungle Cleave and PHP. In both matchups, it's extremely important to be the team that's offensive and forcing cooldowns quickly. In general, versus Jungle Cleave, the Hunter is the best target since the Feral is able to kite a lot more and the Hunter also has Mending Bandage, which takes away a lot of damage during setups by removing bleeds and poisons from Assassination Rogue, which can't be used if the Hunter is stunned. Versus PHP, your target will be the Red Paladin to stop him from using Blessing of Sanctuary or Ward of Glory during a setup. For Fire Mages specifically, Hunter can be hard to deal with since Roar of Sacrifice is a really big cooldown when Combustion is used. Since both the Hunter and Feral will be in stealth, you won't get a good opener and your team will have to start a CC chain with either Blind, Hammer of Justice or Cheap Shot. Jumping into the start of a game, we can see the Rogue opens with a Cheap Shot which allows the mage to follow up with more CC. The hunter gets stunned and decides to use Trinket and Aspect of the Turtle. Versus both Jungle Cleave and PHP, or PHS, Roar of Sacrifice will be the thing to look out for. If Combustion is used while Roar of Sacrifice is available, the enemy team will instantly use it and counter the damage from it. Higher rated teams are gonna save Roar of Sacrifice as a last resort or play scripted and only use Roar of Sacrifice on Combustion. 
which can actually work in your favor since you can easily kill a team without ever using combustion. Jumping into the next clip, we can see that combustion is available, but Roar of Sacrifice is also available. The enemy Peldin gets stunned, and the enemy healer gets blinded. Since combustion is not used, the enemy team decides to hold on to Roar of Sacrifice and end up losing the game. When facing a PHP, the Peldin will usually trinket the first kidney shot to use Blessing of Protection to remove blind from his healer. For that reason, your team should use stuns and polymorphs in the opener to CC the enemy healer to force Trinket or Divine Shield from the Red Paladin. Blind can then be used to force more cooldowns on your second kill attempt. Before we take a look at the next setup, there's one last tip against Jungle Cleave that I've been using myself that I'd like to share. When facing a Jungle Cleave, the Priest will usually use his Trinket and cooldowns before using the Hunter cooldowns. This means you can easily kill the Priest when he's out of cooldowns. Jumping into the next clip, we blind the enemy priest and this forces Roar of Sacrifice from the Hunter. Taking a look at the cooldowns of the enemy team, we can see Pain Suppression has been used, the priest has no trinket since he's playing Redentless, and Roar of Sacrifice has just been used, which means we can easily kill the priest. Let's roll the rest of the clip and see what happens. The priest gets stunned with Kidney Shot, Followed up by another stun. And a Garrod Silence to finish the game. Now let's take a look at some tier 1 Boomkin comms. Versus most Boomkin setups, your game plan will be to train the Boomkin and kidney shot him during setups while chaining CC on the enemy healer. Since Boomkins are very tanky, your team has to play very aggressive and chain CC on the enemy healer and lock down the Boomkin to force cooldowns quickly. Jumping into the next clip, we can see a perfect Ampala opener versus a DH Boomy team. The Shaman and Boomkin get stunned, which allows the mage to follow up with CC. The Boomkin is forced to use Trinket and his Bark Skin to survive. The Rogue follows up with a DR Sap on the Shaman. Followed up with a Garrod Silence, which also forces him to Trinket and drop Spirit Link Totem. Shortly after the opener, the enemy Shaman gets blinded, and the Boom King gets stunned with a Kidney Shot. And the Paladin follows up with a Hammer of Justice after the blind to score the kill. As for Shadow Priest Boomkin, this can be played out in a very similar way to DH Boomkin. The main difference being that you can go for an early kill attempt on the Shadow Priest before they get their damage reduction from Edge of Insanity up. Boomkins are usually played with classes that have a lot of tools for their partners. Boomkins can Cyclone to Peel, Shadow Priest can Master Spell CC, Mages can cast Polymorph, and Demon Hunters can Dispel CC with Reverse Magic. For this reason, your team will have to use CC or use interrupts on the off targets while the kill target sits in the kidney shot during setups. Jumping back to a clip shown before, we can see the mage lands a polymorph on the shaman and the boomkin starts casting cyclone. Counter spell is used to interrupt the cyclone cast and kick gets used to interrupt the master spell cast, which forces the priest to use dispersion. The final comp we'll be looking at is Turbo Cleave with both a Mistweaver Monk and Holy Paladin. When facing a turbo, you want to play as aggressive as possible, doing everything to kill the Shaman as quickly as you can. The Paladin should assist with damage and CC as much as possible, and play very aggressive to finish the game fast. You should be able to win both the Mistweaver Monk and Holy Paladin version of this setup fairly quickly if your team is able to maintain pressure on the Shaman. The standard opener versus a turbo will be to start with a sap on the enemy healer, followed up by either a Hammer of Justice or a Blind. Jumping into the start of a game, we can see the rogue saps the enemy healer. And then opens with a stun on the shaman after. The mage lands a DR polymorph on the enemy healer. Which forces the shaman to use astral shift. When the polymorph ends, I follow up with a stun. And the rogue follows up with a blind after. Which forces the enemy healer to trinket. Shortly after the opener, the rogue stuns the shaman. 
which forces his trinket. Meanwhile, I use my stun on the monk, which forces war banner from the warrior. Jumping ahead towards the end of the game, I stun the enemy healer, which is enough to score the kill. That's gonna be it for our Impala playstyle guide. There's a lot going on in this guide, so don't be afraid to rewatch each section a couple of times. We'd also recommend sharing this guide with your teammates, so they can also understand how our Impala works. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.